Hi guys, uh, Ryan here again, so welcome back once again. Uh, so i doing this transmission job in my truck here, so we got everything out uh, yesterday. Uh, got my clutch caddy out here, which I said, I talk, if you've seen, uh, actually I think it'll be, that video isn't out yet, so it, it won't be out yet, but it will be out shortly, depending on how these, these play out. Um, so clutch caddy out here, nice, nice tool for taking, uh, taking these clutch packs out and putting them back in as well. And uh, for this unit here, I've got all the attachments for it, like fly, taking the flywheel off and all that too, which uh, if, if you watch our other videos, you'll see that if, uh, if you're interested in kind of learning about this device right here. So which um, I'm not promoting them or anything. I bought this full out, but I've, I've used them before and, and I swear by them. They're, they're one of the best tools, a small fleet owner that has a shop or you know, if you're a shop owner, it's a great tool to have. But anyways, uh, the topic that we want to talk about, I just wanted to kind of go through for those of you who don't know how a clutch works or what it looks like, uh, since I had this old one out, I just wanted to kind of dissect it here, go through it, and show you guys what, what your clutch in your truck looks like. If your truck, I mean, even even the auto manuals still have a clutch. It's just not operated by your foot. It's operated by a, solen a big solenoid or motor or actuator that, that pushes the clutch in by controlled by a computer. So we'll start. So this is the whole clutch back. The only thing that we're missing that can, could be considered part of the clutch, I guess, or one of the clutch components is the pilot bearing, which is a bearing that uh, kind of sits on the end of your input shaft and then the end of the uh, flywheel or crankshaft on the engine that keeps everything in line. So that will replace that on this job that we're doing as well, if you're watching the other series on this whole job. Uh, but it's that's still in the truck. I haven't taken it out of the flywheel yet. So uh, with that, we'll kind of go down through the line here. You got two discs in here and what wears out there's these these plates they're like a metallic or ceramic material uh, depending on the type of clutch but this is what wears out normally I mean is the is a wear item on your clutch these pads wear out it's like a brake almost like a brake pad you know in a car same concept that's how that works so these wear down and once they wear down then that's when you get metal on metal and your clutch don't work anymore so where it slips because it's metal on metal. So, and this guy here, I mean, they even look, they even look, like I said, like a brake pad, basically. So this guy's pretty worn. Um, and I'm surprised this, I think this, I thought this was an Eaton, I thought this was an Eaton clutch, but this says it's made in Mexico. I think the Eaton, the new Eaton clutch, that I got a new, I got a new cold clutch pack, and I think the one I have, it's Eaton as well, but it's made in USA. And this is a <clears throat> this is a self-adjusting clutch, or not? A, sorry, it's it is a manual adjustment clutch. I don't know why I'm, I got um, self-adjusting clutch on the brain for some reason. And this little adjuster that is replaceable if that goes bad. Um, I don't rec. I know I've talked about it before. I don't recommend the self-adjusting clutches because in most cases it seems like they adjust yourself twice and then they never work again, and then you've got a burn-up clutch. Um, so, I mean, if we talked about this earlier in the, the video about things to look at or to order up when you're getting a clutch job done. And these, the, the, the manual adjusting ones are typically more expensive than the uh, self-adjusting, but uh, by, by like 50 or or $100. But I always recommend get the manual adjustment clutch. It ain't that big of a deal. Once we finish this job, I'll show you guys how to adjust the clutch. I mean, all you need, I believe that's a three-quarter inch uh, socket or wrench or ratchet wrench and a uh, half inch extension for a, you know, a feeler gauge is all you need to adjust the clutch is really simple. So, and another person in some cases to help you push the pedal. So anyways, back to uh, what we're doing here. So got that first plate there, wear plate. Then you got this driver disc here, I guess you could call it. It's in the middle. And that's got a little bit of wear on it. And then you got another plate here. And these are splined, obviously. And then you got the pressure plate, which this, all these springs are what hold tension on these plates and hold everything together and make it to where you transfer power from the engine to the transmission to the rest of the drive line. So when you actually hit the clutch pedal, this is the throw out bearing right here. And your clutch linkage and the clutch fork actually press on this, compress these springs, 
and then make all this, this stuff, everything we just took out, it makes it all loose to where it can spin and that's what stops that power transfer. Then when you, when you let back off of the clutch, this comes back out and spring pressure pushes, tightens everything back up. So these springs can go bad as well. Uh, I've seen them to where they, they'll, they'll pop out and you know you got pieces laying down in the uh, bell housing and everything else. Um, but like I said, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not that, uh, there's several things that can go wrong in here. I mean, I, I've seen these, these springs in here go bad. I mean, these, there's, there's a lot of things that go bad in this pressure plate where things can, can fly apart and all that from shock and overloading and all, all that nasty stuff. Now there is a grease line here. Uh, for my, my truck has remote greasing, so this grease line hooks up to a, like, almost like a, a quarter inch air brake line and goes up to the front to where you can grease this. So, I mean, I should have took this off when I took the, uh, before I took this off, but I kind of got ahead of myself. So I'll have to take this off to put it on the new, new throwout bearing. But my new kit comes with all of this, and then I bought a uh, pilot bearing for the inside too. So, so if you're interested, uh, <clears throat> yeah, like I said, this is uh, basically what your clutch looks like and kind of what it does in a nutshell um, and this like i said this clutch caddy this this basically simulates the exact your input shaft like it's on the front of the transmission so um but yeah it makes it real nice to work with but anyways guys i just wanted to throw that out there kind of as a, we're in the middle of this job you know as a little little kind of bonus video something uh just on a short topic here uh, just like by you know if you're you think you ever getting a clutch job done or you wonder what it looked like you can see to see what all the pieces look like and all that so just a little kind of informative video so uh, that's pretty much it guys i'll keep this kind of short uh but uh, again uh thanks for watching everybody subscribe if you haven't already if you're new uh, hit the bell for the updates um, like the video you know give us a thumbs up that's the best way to kind of if you enjoy the channel and, and you uh like it word on that's the best way you can kind of spread the word that because that gets youtube to push it to other people and all that so but, uh, we appreciate all the support and everything um get if you're interested i always put it out if you're interested in our in the farming stuff you know we used to do it on the same channel but we split everything so now uh we, we have a separate channel for our kind of our farm activities and all that so if you're interested in that type of stuff you know tractors animals and crops and hay we're doing a lot of hay now and all that stuff so if you're interested in that we always put a link for that channel as well so check that out and uh, hopefully you like that and be a subscriber of that as well so uh, again guys thanks for everything uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time